one then continues to kind of move into a direction of potential loss and, and sometimes bankruptcy. This is what happened at Webvan. We raised a billion dollars. We didn't take corrective steps of not replicating fast enough. We were bankrupt three years. We had launched the whole thing nine months from, from a founder writing a business plan on a paper napkin. And he had already done the second largest bookstore in the US. But uh, he, we were able to raise capital from the premier VCs in the Valley at that time. But even sometimes people who can think well are not honest with themselves on what will make money or they're too ambitious on what consumer behavior will be or what the supporting uh, <coughs> paradigms that are going to support. In that case, it was are people going to A, trust buying food online and is there enough internet connection all over the country? Today, for example, you can still go to Webvan. Amazon has bought that, that property. The same logo that was created 15 years ago exists today. So the time has come today. The economics has come today because of scale. The idea may still be very, very valid. Or whatever ideas as entrepreneurs you all come up with, the ideas are not what makes a business and what makes a successful company. right? It's ideas, timing, the ability to react and then change, and then actually being calm in crisis. Because the only, uh, a great ideator may not be a great uh, successful entrepreneur until you, you, can, you can put aside your ego sometimes and say, be honest with yourself on the idea, or this is my idea. Sometimes you have to, you know, sometimes a teammate or a partner might be more honest with you on what's going wrong. The ability to listen and then say, because of this change and because of this uh, rug from being pulled from under us, how is it that we, what is it that we do, do different tomorrow uh, or in fact today? Because it's very, very easy to get sucked up in what's called the daily whirlwind. And the daily whirlwind for some of you all as entrepreneurs, you may already have some customers. Sometimes you may have thousands of customers. And the rug from under you is being pulled because of turbulence. It may be regulatory changes, it may be uh, technology changes. In the mobile industry, for example, we are always struggling at Netcore. We are uh, in email and mobile. We are always struggling with regulatory changes. Arbitrary regulatory changes, are, are in fact, policies are introduced almost every two or three months. Sometimes prices change 10x. Now imagine. If, if we've sold a customer that this is a low-cost medium of advertising and the price suddenly tomorrow changes 10x, what does that do to your business model? Your customers, many of them, they still love the product, but they can't afford it. So volumes go, go down this thing. You still have an have a employee base of, you know, however large you are. What is it that you do with them? And during turbulence, until irrespective of the size of your team, sometimes some of you all may have teams of five or 10 or, or 50 or 100 or a few thousand, until from a management level, you are honest with them, right? And communicate frequently, but not too frequently. I, mean, I would suggest uh, a bi-weekly communication on what is changing and, uh, you know, for, for larger teams, that is, and for smaller teams, it may be even daily. Uh, to make sure that, that teams understand what is changing and what they need to do. Because sometimes only telling them what is changing is not good enough. What they need to do and then measuring them that are they doing it. Because a lot of times what happens is if any two people meet, they all agree that, uh, that this is what needs to be done and this is how you know we're getting screwed by the market and the industry or the regulator or or taxes, or customers, or what have you, or per, per, per service level perception. Perception is also one of the turbulence factors. So, uh, but then measuring what has been decided as to be, to be done at a frequency that's pre-decided is very, very critical to manage through chaos. Uh, coming back to the, uh, uh, my example of moving back to Netcore uh, in 2005, 
there were multiple changes in the email and mobile industry in the last seven, eight years. Some of them included, so this is kind of going into the ex explanation of what turbulence could be, because I didn't want to make turbulence as an abstract concept. I'll give you some of the examples from my own case studies of what turbulence could be, and I'm sure that from tomorrow I'm going to learn different attributes of what turbulence could be. But maybe maybe you all will come across the, the same, same turbulences in your uh, in your areas. So at Intel, it was perception from the market of not doing something right for the customer. It was actually just perception, but did we do it right? Second, it was low cost competition in the Asi Asian uh, manufacturing case at Intel. At Siebel, it was, uh, and Siebel is a company which is the largest CRM com software company in the world. Uh, for 10 years, they had been, been selling uh, CRM software. But then the internet came along and Salesforce uh, came along and more and more customers started using online uh, low cost, overall cost to company kind of uh, uh, models. Siebel didn't had that, have that. And they were late in the game and realizing that they need to have a hosted model. About 18 months late compared to Salesforce. So having the whole company kind of, when they have thousands of customers already online with install bases and things like that, to suddenly restructure the product line and only do things that are, because the, the old customers, the thing is the people who are paying you 90, 95% of the revenue are still going to be demanding on what they want. But then to say, I'm not going to put 95% of my company catering to what 95% of my clients or my current revenue wants, but to do something else. Maybe 50% of the team still caters to that. Maybe only 30% of the team caters to that. And the, the rest of the company is going to focus on something else. You know, that takes guts, gumption, and that is why you all are entrepreneurs. Because... Uh, unless you are a lifestyle entrepreneur where growth is not the challenge, growth is all, always going to demand doing something other than what you used to do before. That's the only guarantee. Uh, so at Netcore, we've faced many, uh, many problems uh, since the last few years. One is includes senior employee exits. A uh, couple of years back when I took on my current role, uh, the previous CEO and a few of, few of the, uh, the senior employees, uh, you know, uh, went and left another company and start, uh, started their own thing. So that for, for a day or two, you say, how is it that you're going to react to, uh, to these things? But unless you're calm and you say, really, it doesn't matter. Your, your client base is still your client base. You know, how is it that you, you ensure that you can retain them? How is it that you can still make sure that it, the vision that the company had is still intact, irrespective of who leaves? Sometimes maybe the founder falls sick. Sometimes maybe uh, a senior management person has a personal crisis. We all have people sometimes, uh, you know, who, or, or he, he may need to be in the hospital, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of his time uh, catering for, uh, for a loved one. All of these... Uh, um, are turbulences which all of y'all will see. I'm just saying from personal experiences that, you know. So how to bake in your personal turbulence along with the business turbulence, but still be calm and then say, what is it that you need to do next? Really, in, in my nutshell, is what one, uh, what, how one needs to manage through crisis. Yeah, I can maybe take questions. Are there any questions? There are a lot of platforms, uh, popular platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Google, and all Pinterest. So why are most of the startups based in US? Like 80% of the most accessed websites in the world are the startups of US entrepreneurs. In, uh, we Indians, uh, in spite of having uh, 
good IT knowledge and good population like the consumer base, still why is that the, like the US startups are gaining more recognition in the world compared to any other? So like Ashok mentioned, the especially Silicon Valley, but the rest of the US as well, uh, and I guess he's Houston may also be active, uh, has a very entrepreneurial mindset where uh, a lot of the, if you look back at the history of, let's say, the Valley, which which I would argue could be the 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 seed of venture capital, uh, 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 or the cap, um, where many of the companies like Cisco and Intel and others have have this thing, is that they have a good structure uh, infrastructure of institutes and alumni who contribute back endorsements and then have incubator programs to encourage entrepreneurship. But that said, uh, like also Ashokan mentioned, in the end, it's not, it's not teaching that makes you an entrepreneur, okay? You ha need to have that innate spark within you to say that I can take risk, I'm going to deal with turbulence, I'm going to deal with, uh, uh, with uncertainty, and yet I'm going to make payroll, right? If you don't have that spirit and then maybe after two years you're making payroll and making payroll is not the issue and the issue is how do you get 30 percent growth year on year or x percent growth year on year depending on the market you're in <coughs> or the sites you have that drive irrespective of your own personal comfort level if that doesn't wake you up in the morning and say this is what is going to drive my team, right? You're not, not an entrepreneur. I would say that I Indians really, from a lifestyle perspective, from a, I would say, let's say, a mom and pop business perspective, we have a very large uh, set of lifestyle entrepreneurs, okay? So, in fact, if you go to the US, probably 70% of hotel rooms are owned by Indians. Right, I, I don't, it's a well-known st statistic. They are all entrepreneurs. They w work really hard. Sometimes take their families and 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 do that. But why is it that they need to go there to uh, to do it rather than here? And many of them have become, besides a lifestyle business, growth businesses. Okay, so the their innate ability to shine is is there. You have to spark it within yourself or your team, and sometimes, uh, like also mentioned, it might be that a person has that creative instinct, but it just needs to be sparked. So just like when employing, uh, when hiring new employees into your company, usually it isn't your the job description that he, he or she comes up with that is important. What is important is, does he, have the, he or she have that spark in the eye to do it when the chips are down? You know, at least that's what I look for when hiring. And because that's the only guarantee of what's there tomorrow. Right. Thank you. Hi, this is Sagar. Yeah. Uh, you talked about uh, analysis uh, before, like, uh, getting into the market. So there are two things. One is analysis and second is uh, launching the uh, thing first in the market. So how can we balance these two particular attributes and uh, get at the right time at the right place? Can you give some bullet points on analysis that we can have these points in analysis and? Well, I think that's a secret sauce then we would all be on the premise. But uh, so. Uh, but besides that flippant answer, let me think. So, see, in the end, it might be that there's a change in the industry, there's an opportunity that's there. There's also, in almost anything that is there, there's somebody else somewhere doing something reasonably similar, or sometimes you may think you're completely unique, but then you also have an assumption that user behavior or business behavior is going to change and hence they're all going to adopt, right? So how is it that you then get balance between A, either it's an assumption or between fear or differentiation between 
what is what is already there in the market sometimes consumes people okay but the world is a big place okay there is space for for all of us and maybe 10 times as many as us and maybe 100 times as many as us so to say that i don't need to be first on day 1 but i need to get my product out there for at least somebody to consume because otherwise if you in a analysis paralysis situation or you're taking too long to do it and sometimes you you may take too long to do it not only when you are a startup you may take too long to do it even at a large company cbl was a good example where they took too long to go online okay because they had great revenues because you know you the metrics in place to get somewhere are not the same metrics that you need to for growth especially for a slightly larger company so the first so uh, yeah one great thing is as an entrepreneur you'll have to know what is the right metric at the right time okay because the sometimes you come up with a set of metrics and this is what i measure right but what you measure today is not necessarily the the right metric for what you measure when when industry changes so for example one metric at netcot today might be revenue and that's you know but maybe revenue is not the thing but maybe margin marg- margin is a thing or maybe it's it's margin per employee that is eventually going to be growth or maybe it's none of the above maybe is it is mind share in the consumer space that, that this is the company to go to for great market marketing uh, ideas so which one is the right metric and sometimes it may be all of the above but then to give the right focus to 